Incredible Voyagers. Years and decades pass by, but not a month goes by that the two most popular interplanetary probes in the world don't make people talk about them. Astronomers seem literally unable to let them go, to resign themselves to losing them. And so, even when the signals and the incoming data become more and more scarce, they continue to chase them with their calculations, scrutinizing from afar the fate they are going to meet. As in this case, where they even talk about the state of preservation of that message in a bottle that the two probes carry within themselves, like a hope. Voyager 1 and 2 Now we know a little better the fate of the probes. Predicting future events can be a very slippery topic to treat, but sometimes physics and math can help. And while the future of each of us remains completely unpredictable, that of two interplanetary probes seemingly destined to get lost in space can instead be anticipated with surprisingly plausible details. We can, for example, not only reconstruct the trajectory of two probes that are fleeing from the Sun, accurately calculating their future encounters with other stars, but also describe their gradual deterioration, including what precious things they carry inside, simply by hypothesizing which region of our galaxy they will pass through. The amount of interstellar dust they will encounter will in fact make a difference, as will their dolphin-like sway above and below the equatorial plane of the galaxy. And that's what he tried to do. Nick Ober, PhD, student at the Captain Astronomical Institute in the Netherlands who wanted to try to improve the reliability and accuracy of the next stellar encounters of the Voyager probes in his work recently presented at the 237th meeting of the American Astronomical Society. But not only, the Dutch astronomer also wanted to try to understand how long the famous gold disks that the two spacecraft carry on board would be preserved so that they could be read by some extraterrestrial civilization that had collected them. You know what we are talking about, right? NASA launched Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 in 1977 to trek across the solar system. On each was a 30-centimeter large gold-plated copper disk, the brainchild of famed astronomer Carl Sagan. The golden records were engraved with music and photographs meant to represent Earth and its humans to any intelligent beings the spacecraft meet on their long journeys. Both spacecraft visited Jupiter and Saturn, then the twins parted ways. Voyager 1 studied Saturn's moon Titan while Voyager 2 swung past Uranus and Neptune. In 2012, Voyager 1 passed through the heliopause that marks the edge of the Sun's solar wind and entered interstellar space. In 2018, Voyager 2 did so as well. Now the two spacecraft are chugging through the vast outer reaches of the solar system. They continue to send signals back to Earth, updating humans about their adventures far beyond the planets although those bulletins may cease in a few years, as the spacecraft are both running low on power. But their journeys are far from over. Omberg combined tracking the Voyager's trajectories forward with studying the environments the spacecraft will fly through to estimate the odds of the Golden Records surviving their adventures while remaining legible. The result is a forecast that stretches beyond not just humanity's likely extinction, but also beyond the collision of the Milky Way with the neighboring Andromeda galaxy, beyond even the extinction of most stars. Unsurprisingly, his research ambitions didn't start out quite so vast. The new research was inspired by the release of the second batch of data from the European Space Agency spacecraft Gaia, which specializes in mapping more than a billion stars super precisely. Our original goal was to determine with a very high precision which stars the Voyagers might one day closely encounter using the at-the-time newly released Gaia catalog of stars," Olberg said during his presentation. So he and his co-author began by tracing the Voyager's journeys to date and projecting their trajectories out into the future. But don't get excited for any upcoming milestones. Not until about 20,000 years from now will the Voyagers pass through the Oort cloud, the shell of comets and icy rubble that orbits the Sun at a distance of up to 100,000 astronomical units or 100,000 times the average Earth-Sun distance, finally waving goodbye to its solar system of origin. At that point, for the first time, the craft will begin to feel the gravitational pull of other stars more strongly than that of our own Sun, Oberg said. It's another 10,000 years before the spacecraft actually come near an alien star, specifically a red dwarf star called Ross 248. 
That flyby will occur about 30,000 years from now, Oberg said. Although it might be a stretch to say that the spacecraft will pass by that star. It's actually more like Ross 248 shooting past the nearly stationary Voyagers, he said. These calculations are tricky because as the spacecraft travel away from Earth, cosmos around them move too. Holmberg and his colleagues have found the spacecraft's destinations by using the 3D positions and 3D velocities of 7.2 million stars. In the new study, Holmberg calculated that the next star that Voyager 1 will pass will be Earth's nearest stellar neighbor, Proxima Centauri, in 16,700 years. However, this encounter will be unremarkable as the craft's closest approach will be 3.6 light years, very, very far away. In fact, Voyager 1 is currently 4.24 light years from the star, so this encounter won't be much closer than the craft's current location is. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality. These distant encounters might not generate excitement, but Olberg predicts other future flybys in which the spacecraft will get remarkably close to stars outside our solar system. For example, Voyager 1 will get very close to the star TYC 3135-52-1, a star located about 46.9 light years from our Sun, in 302,700 years. The craft will pass within 0.9 light years, so close that the spacecraft might penetrate the star's Oort cloud which is a shell of cosmic objects that surround a star past its planets, if it has one. Additionally, the researcher found that Voyager 1 will swing close, within 1.27 light-years, of the Gaia star that lies a whopping 520.22 light-years away from the Sun. They predicted that the craft will pass close to this faraway star in 3.4 million years. By 500 million years from now, the solar system and the Voyagers alike will complete a full orbit through the Milky Way. There's no way to predict what will have happened on Earth's surface by then, but it's a time span on the scale of the formation and destruction of Pangaea and other supercontinents, Oberg said. Throughout this galactic orbit, the Voyager spacecraft will oscillate up and down, with Voyager 1 doing so more dramatically than its twin. According to these models, Voyager 1 will travel so far above the main disk of the galaxy that it will see stars at just half the density as we do. The same difference in vertical motion will also shape the differing odds each spacecraft's golden record has of survival. The records were designed to last, meant to survive perhaps a billion years in space. Beneath the golden sheen is a protective aluminum casing, and below that the engraved copper disks themselves. But to truly understand how long these objects may survive, you have to know what conditions they'll experience, and that means knowing where they'll be. Specifically, Olberg and his colleague needed to know how much time the spacecraft would spend swathed in the Milky Way's vast clouds of interstellar dust, which he called one of the few phenomena that could actually act to damage the spacecraft. It's a grim scenario, dust pounding onto the Voyagers at a speed of a few miles or kilometers per second. The grains will act as a steady rain that slowly chips away at the skin of the spacecraft, Oberg said. A dust grain of only one thousandth of a millimeter across will leave a small vaporized crater when it impacts. Voyager's one vertical oscillations mean that the spacecraft will spend more time above and below the plane of the galaxy, where the clouds are thickest. Oberg and his colleagues simulated thousands of times over the paths of the two spacecraft and their encounters with the dust clouds modeling the damage the golden records would incur along the way. That work also requires taking into consideration the possibility that a cloud's gravity might tug at one of the Voyager's trajectories, Oberg said. The clouds have so much mass concentrated in one place that they actually may act to bend the trajectory of the spacecraft and fling them into new orbits, sometimes much farther out, sometimes even deeper toward the galactic core. Both golden records have good odds of remaining legible since their engraved sides are tucked away against the spacecraft bodies. The outer surface of Voyager 1's record is more likely to erode away, but the information on Voyager 2's record is more likely to become illegible, Olberg said. The main reason for this is because the orbit that Voyager 2 is flung into is more chaotic, and it's significantly more difficult to predict with any certainty of exactly what sort of environment it's going to be flying through, he said. But despite the onslaught and potential detours, both golden records are highly likely to survive 
at least partially intact for a span of over 5 billion years, Oberg said. After those 5 billion years, modeling is quite impossible. That's when the Milky Way is due to collide with its massive neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy, and things get messy. The orderly spiral shape will be severely warped and possibly destroyed entirely, Oberg said. The Voyagers will be caught up in the merger, with the details difficult to predict so far in advance. Meanwhile, the vicarious sightseeing continues. Oberg and his colleague calculated that in this 5 billion year model friendly period, each of the Voyagers likely visits a star besides our Sun within about 150 times the distance between Earth and the Sun, or three times the distance between the Sun and Pluto at the dwarf planet's most distant point. Precisely which star that might be, however, very difficult. It may not even be in fact a star we know today. While neither Voyager is likely to get particularly close to any star before the galaxies collide, the craft are likely to at least pass through the outskirts of some star system, Oberg said. The very strange part is that that actually might be a system that does not yet exist, of a star that is yet to be born. Such are the perils of working on a scale of billions of years. From here, the Voyager's fate depends on the conditions of the galactic merger, Oberg said. The collision itself might kick a spacecraft out of the newly monstrous galaxy, a one in five chance, he said, although it would remain stuck in the neighborhood. If that occurs, the biggest threat to the Golden Records would become collisions with high-energy cosmic rays and the odd molecule of hot gas, Oberg said. These impacts would be rarer than the dust that characterized their damage inside the Milky Way. Inside the combined galaxy, the Voyager's fate would depend on how much dust is left behind by the merger. Oberg said that may well be minimal as star formation and explosion both slow, reducing the amount of dust flung into the galaxy. Depending on their luck with this dust, the Voyagers may be able to ride out trillions of trillions of trillions of years, long enough to cruise through a truly alien cosmos, Oberg said. Such a distant time is far beyond the point where stars have exhausted their fuel and star formation has ceased in its entirety in the universe, he said. The Voyagers will be drifting through what would be, to us, a completely unrecognizable galaxy, free of so-called main-sequence stars, populated almost exclusively by black holes and stellar remnants such as white dwarfs and neutron stars. It's a dark future, Oberg added. The only source of significant illumination in this epoch will be supernovas that result from the once-in-a-trillion-year collision between these stellar remnants that still populate the galaxy, he said. Our work found on these records thus may bear witness to these isolated flashes in the dark. Will the spacecraft ever collide with a star, thus ending their travels permanently? Maybe, but if so, it won't likely be for a long, long, long time, like nearly twice the current age of the universe. So even if our species is gone, our spacecraft will wander on and maybe one of them will find its way into the arms of some other civilization. We'll unpack a Voyager golden record, marvel at the bizarre anatomies of us ancient aliens, and get a kick out of Chuck Berry singing Johnny Be Good.